Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband. Wife. Do you remember what happened yesterday? Uh, There was a lot of potato sack wearing (laughs) and uh, like um, 185,000 or somebody died. The the supposed bad guys, you know, the, the ones that aren't Judah or the Israelites. Right. Although God swept away the Israelites yeah. in two chapters ago. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, potato King, sacks. King Sennacherib of Assyria, he's yes. the one that lost 185,000 um, soldiers. And he was like, um, before that, he was like, ha, 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 you guys suck so hard. <laughs> Your God is trash. Why would you not want to follow me and my right, God? Yeah. Wah, ha, ha. Yeah. And, and then, then they all died. And he was like, I gotta go. And then, and then, and I then think his, he died. his sons killed him. Yeah. 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 That happened. That's interesting. It was something. It was something. I, mean, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of trash though. I'm like, they're just like. The, all of a sudden, they're like, one, two, three, go. Let's prove the power of the Lord. 185,000 people died. Yeah. And we killed this king, and they wore potato sacks, so, like, they're cool and stuff. Right, you because, um, oh, Hezekiah, was that it? King yeah, Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Yeah. He was like, I'm praying to God, please help me and make me But he just doesn't awesome. seem, like, as far as kings go, he hasn't done a lot of kingly things that make him great, but they said he was great. And I'm like, where's the great? He prayed to God. Well, I, I he, guess that's he got considered rid great. Of some Asherah poles and got away. Yeah, but, but we that. talked about that last time. They, all of them have done that. All the good ones. Have all done the good that. ones have done that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't really get it, but. And God. they always say they got them all, and I'm like, well, then where the fuck do they keep coming from? Yeah, they sure as fuck don't like, you know, multiply themselves. Do they? Do they? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, okay, so that was 2 Kings chapter 19. Sure as fuck was. And today we're going to be reading... 2 Kings chapter 20. Let's go do this. Let's. Hey wife. Yes, husband. Did you know that we are now on Patreon? Um, yes because you told me, but also, no, tell me more. <laughs> So we're on Patreon now. Are we? We are. And our supporters can go there and support us. And we have multiple levels all the way up to You Killed God. That sounds really drastic and escalated quickly-ish. Well, no, there's multiple levels before there. So it it escalates on a sliding scale of, you know, cheap to to not cheap. But, you know, we can definitely use any amount. So, like, any support is always appreciated. So what... Exactly is Patreon. It's a place where you can show your support for our podcast. And Just our podcast? Any podcast or any <laughs> performer. But, you know, we're the ones that, you know, you're listening to right now. So maybe you should, uh, you know, support us. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. But we love you anyway. So all you got to do is go to Patreon. Look up Sacrilegious Discourse. It's actually patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse is our actual main page there. So head on over and send us some love. Yeah. Okay, Second Kings chapter twenty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. About that time. About <laughs> that time. Yeah. Right about that time. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. One day, Hezekiah became deathly ill. Oh, that's oh, sad. Boy. So he didn't ever get to be great, really. No. He kind of just sucked. He and prayed and wore great. potato sacks. He was great in his time. He was great. Dude was great because he knocked down fucking totem poles and shit and and then prayed to god and yeah. wore potato sacks and I mean, didn't get killed by other fucking kings yeah, duh. like he didn't even fight them he just didn't get killed by them and the prophet isaiah yeah son of amaz went to visit him okay you know because he's dying right yeah he's dying he gave the king this message okay this is what the lord says 
set your affairs in order for you going to die. I'm, I said. think, I mean. You going to die. He, I think he was visiting them because he was already dying, wasn't he? I know, he? yeah. So, like, I'm pretty sure the king was already like, yeah, yes. duh. Go on. And? <laughs> you will not recover from this illness. Okay. That's shitty news. Right. Why do you got to be so fucking prophetic? Wait, pro- 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 thanks. Pro- prophetic. Pro- prophetic? Prophetic. 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 Sorry, the word wasn't working in my head. I know. I could tell. Yeah. But I'm just like... Thanks for that news that I didn't really want to hear. Appreciate ya. Yeah. Like, can I just die in peace? Go away. Right. Huh. And, like, what What do you have to get in order? Like, it, either people listen to what you want or not. You I know, mean, like, there's not, there's not a lot. To, just, like, I'm king. This guy gets it, okay? But maybe it's a matter of, like, definitely... Um, finish your will, make sure that it says everything you wanted to say. If you've got some concubines that you forgot to have covered, right. now's your chance. Okay. All right. You know? Yeah. Get get your affairs in order. You die in. You would think, though, that kings who run mm. an entire people, right? I would always, would always have, have my, their fucking affairs in order. I would always have my shit straight. In fact, you would probably hire somebody to do it for you. Follow you around and, like, every word that drops... From my lips, they pick it up. Right. To make sure it's where it's supposed my to be. My liege, what what thing of your order which shall I place in the paper today? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. That so that he was like, well enough to turn his face yeah. to the wall and he's in and bed. Pray. He didn't get up and scream. Do you think he was wearing a potato sack though? Probably. Okay. Remember, O oh Lord, how I've always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Yeah. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I mean, okay. That's what happened. Yeah, I mean, you're dying. Like you nobody, want, nobody fucking wants to die. Honestly, every time I get sick, I do the same thing. <laughs> I go, <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> This is this is absolutely true. Because when I get sick, I feel like I'm fucking dying. But if I put my fucking head on my head, my hey, hand on my head, yeah, because I have a headache, you like you I turn into so such angry. a bitch. I'm so angry. You shall not exhibit signs of weakness in my presence, husband. Oh, it's awful. Do not. I am going to die one day of a sickness because you're going to be like, fuck you, and no. you're just going to leave me there to rot. No, you need to always be strong. You take care of me, not vice versa. Mm. You take care of me, and I scoop the litter box. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Is that the way it goes? Yes. Okay. You feed the cat. I scoop the litter box. Okay. You take care of me. You do not have weakness. God Whatev- damn it. Whatever you say. I, it really, you're right. It's totally irrational. It's not fair. It's not good. But when you are sick, I get so angry. You do. I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't. I don't know why I'm like this. I admit that it's a character flaw. I don't know how to change it. I could pray. Do you want me to pray? Do you want me to wear a potato sack and pray? No. Okay, well then that just accept that that's what it is. I, yeah, I, I mean, we've been together long enough. I already have. So, I know. You know. Good, 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 good. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> but before Isaiah had left the middle courtyard... This message came to him from the Lord. Like, really? You waited until he walked all the way across the goddamn kingdom? <laughs> you couldn't have told me, Well, no, God. just the courtyard. You know, he walked across the courtyard. Yeah, yeah. He left the fucking castle. He left the house. He's walking across the courtyard. He's about to, like, leave so he can get to his house. He's already walked a good ways. I mean, God has tested people walking in a lot longer ma- fashions. But why did this have to be a test? At least he didn't send him on a 40-year trek before he came back. Facts. <laughs> but why did this have to be a test? Like, why couldn't you just... Like, you're God. You can stop... You could tell me before I leave the fucking room. It should just say God, and then next it should say why. And that would be, like, all you need to know about the Bible. Facts. Right? <laughs> it's so true. Go back to Hezekiah, say God. Okay. The leader of my people. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. Oh. And three days from now, you going to get up out of bed and go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 motherfucking years what? to your life. And Wait I a will second. rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. Hold on, hold on. All right. So, Isaiah, a prophet of the Lord, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
he gets word from God, I'm assuming, uh-huh. because he's a prophet, right? Yeah. He prophesized. Uh-huh. And, and God's like, you're going to die, dude, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then Hezekiah is like, yo, I don't want to die, and then prays while facing the wall. Mm-hmm. And and then God hears him, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I I'm going to change my mind I right here. God doesn't change his he mind. Doesn't, I, you know, that's what I was wondering. That's what I was just thinking. Like, huh. he doesn't change, but he changed his mind. He, and he waited some until... Because some dude prayed. Mm-hmm. At the right time. Caught him in the right mood. So so this strikes me that he can keep people from dying. Uh-huh. According to this, but he, he just chooses not to. He chooses not to. Yeah. So he's a royal fucking asshole. So when I hear people say God's got a plan, what I say to them is, no, he doesn't. Right. Yeah, no, he, no, he, he changed he, this guy... He's willy nilly. He's moody. He he's he's got favorites. Capricious. Is what he's got. Yeah. And yeah. and I mean you know we're, we're playing from the side that we're assuming that God is actually real, like yeah. you know pretending that that's the case. He's, if that's the case, he's got a mercurial temperament. Right. But this is bullshit. This is bullshit. Because I I know people that have whatever uh, you you can't do the things you've done in this world and then and then. And then cure this guy. I don't care who it is. I don't yeah. care who it is. This makes you an asshole. Yeah. You are the a fact, fucking asshole. The fact that you have done it and don't. Right. My best friend lost her child. Why? Can you explain that? No. No. No, no one I'm can. Sorry. No one fucking can. But you know what? I'm sorry. That right there. End of story. Right. If God is real, he's a dick. He ain't real. There it is. Right. You right. know? And the fact that you guys choose to believe this, you guys Christians choose to believe in this dick, makes you a dick too. I'm sorry. Right. It's just, just that's the way it is. No, and it's not just like a small case scenario. Like no. this happens all the fucking time. It's true. People, kids. Let's just stick with kids. Let's just stick kids, with kids. Kids die all the fucking time. Needlessly. Pointlessly. And I know their parents and people around them are praying that mm-hmm. they don't die. Yes. And yet they do. And. Maybe it's because they're not wearing potato sacks. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Right. I gotta put on a fucking potato sack and cry at the right wall. Right. For you to feel sorry enough to save a kid. Now get the fuck out of here. If you if you were saving people but couldn't save them all, but like showed us you were saving people, mm-hmm. I could be like, okay, maybe you you know you you, you can't, can't catch them all, all right? Yeah. You can't get them all. Yeah. But like you don't get any. Any. None. Yeah, fuck And if you. you do, you don't let us fucking know. Right. And it certainly doesn't show up on any radar because there's nothing that doesn't happen because of science that I'm aware of. Yeah. Maybe there's like one in a million that's like really fucking weird. But you know what? That hap- There's outliers with every fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, God's a dick. God's an asshole. This God fuck in this guy. Bible is a dick. And that that right there is, is favoritism if he's around and... We know he's not, so it's just bullshit and whatever. Right. So, but that's what sorry, I'm, saying, I'm on a little like, bit of a rant here. Well, it's like not only doesn't he exist, but then the way that they wrote him to exist is with favoritism. It's not even a good story, right? And it's apparently based on how much fucking money you have because he always helps the goddamn kings. Yeah, like there's exactly. no you never hear him helping a peasant or or some the the the. the Worst off in life. I mean, that one widow did. Ah, have but that's her the prophet. It's the prophets that are doing that. Yeah, the prophets are the ones that are deciding that they want to help this person, and then God allows them to help this person. Yeah, that's so the true. prophets are are doing it. God never specifically chooses someone that's downtrodden downtrodden to help. It's true. The prophets choose them. That's true. And maybe they're you know quote unquote driven by God to do that, mm-hmm. but. There have been multiple times where God has directly helped somebody, and it's always been someone of power and money. Gee, always. I wonder why. I wonder why that story is like that. Right? Because it's people with power and money that write the fucking story. So, well, yeah. Duh. Yeah. 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 This whole thing is a farce, and it's a bad one at that. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like it makes me have even less respect for the people who believe this shit because i'm like have you read this It's so bad if you read this you could not possibly believe this if you read it straight through the way we're doing right you could not possibly think that this is a good god so i was this got i was i was thinking about this on the way home um because i'm i'm i currently just finished a book by stephen hines uh, a friend of ours that we just made when we went down to our last the the atheist or i'm sorry the the kentucky free thought convention and um I, great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah, and uh, I really enjoyed the book. Um, and 
he he keeps saying um, once he turned atheist how he um, he doesn't like to judge people and doesn't like to throw it in people's faces and, and things like that as far as his atheism, right? And I, I think about it and I'm like, you know, I can I can be down with that to an extent, and and I think he kind of well, feels the same way too. Like he, he he'll you know. I think probably he has a forgiveness factor because he's like, I grew up in this shit and. You know, I was there, and right, so, right. You know, but I, but I mean, it's more like I can, I can forgive Christianity and religion to an extent, and that's like the people that don't bother me and don't bother my politics. Mm-hmm. I like if they don't make it public and it's their own private matter. Mm-hmm. I can accept that, right? Right. But when they flaunt it in my face and they do make it public as far as policies and 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 laws. I can't, I can't accept that no. because because I, I mean, and it's getting worse as I'm, <coughs> excuse me, um, as I'm reading this Bible here as we're going through it because I'm seeing these examples of what God supposedly is, right? And it is complete and utter bullshit, right? And yet, yet we base laws on this fucking farce of a fucking God. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's just it pisses me off. And when someone wants to tell me how to live my life through laws or just directly at me, it's it pisses me off still. I wish I could be a better person and say, you know, you do you, I'm just going to be over here doing me. I like that idea, but I've honestly gotten angry, more, more angry as I've gone through life because I feel like it's intruded more and more into my life. Well, put it this way. I don't go knocking on doors ex- trying to get people to join the atheist cause. Right. But how many people have come knocking on our door trying to get us to go to church? And how many people, how many letters have you, I haven't received any. <laughs> right. But you, as a man, how many invitations to various churches have you received just since we've lived in this house? I would say upwards at least, of ten. I was going to say at least five. Right. Yeah. Mr. Husband and family. And I'm like, um, I'm not just a fucking uh, belonging of Mr. Husband. Right. You right. know? And they always come from a woman. And I'm, I I don't know why. Or like, kids. There's kids sometimes. Right. But it just makes me really, really angry because I'm like, um, I'm not a jealous person. Like, I don't feel like I can't trust you or anything like that. But I'm like... What if I was? How fucking dare you, as a woman, it's always women, except for when it's kids, writing to my husband, (laughs) inviting him to come to their church. How fucking dare you? Do not, do not write letters to my fucking husband, you cunt. (laughs) Don't invite my husband places with me as a side baggage. Right. No, don't fucking do it. If, if I'm mentioned at all. Yeah. Do not. Right. Who the fuck do you think you are that you have the right to send letters, handwritten mail, to my fucking husband inviting him anywhere? Don't. Just don't. Right, right. Okay. I think we have bashed God, Christians, and the church enough. Yeah, sorry. Continue. I was just... I felt, I felt like... Yeah, sorry. Mm-mm. No, bad. we're both... We're both a little upset tonight. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Apparently. We got some shit to say. Right. Okay, yeah. so God is is telling Isaiah that or right, his name's Isaiah. Is that the the prophet guy? I, Isaiah. Sure. What's that his name? I don't um, know. He gave the king this message. That yeah, sounds, Isaiah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was gonna Sorry. say it sounded right. I just want to make sure his name was Isaiah, because sometimes I remember wrong. Right. You know? Yeah. Okay, so um God is telling Isaiah Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, says. I've heard your prayers and seen your tears. I will heal you, and three days from now you will get out of bed and go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 fucking years to your life, and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. If he's so great, why did it take him three days to heal him? (laughs) I will defend this city for my own honor... And for the sake of my servant, David. Wow, that's really, that's nice of That's him. nice, that's yeah. nice. Then Isaiah said, make an ointment from figs. So Hezekiah's servant spread the ointment over the boil, and guess what? what? Wait a second, wait. Hezekiah now, recovered. Now you need fucking, God just can't, like, fix it. He needs some sort of a fucking ointment. 
Yeah. To fix it. Yeah. Not why does Why does God need that kind of like He needs help and days to recover? Mm-hmm. It sounds like bullshit. It sounds like Isaiah was holding out on a fucking mm-hmm. fix that he had. And he's like, you better, you know, rededicate yourself to God or I'm not helping. Mm-hmm. 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 And not only that, but he was just sick. Now he's got a fucking boil. Right. Yeah. And he wow. was going to die of a boil. Hmm. It's crazy. Interesting. All right. Meanwhile, Hezekiah had said to Isaiah, what sign will the Lord give to prove that he will heal me and that I will go to the temple of the Lord three days from now? You need a sign? I'm telling you, that's the fucking sign. The sign is that I am telling you. Just do what I'm telling you, and if it comes to pass, that's the sign. Right, right. I never understand that question. What is the sign? I just gave you the fucking sign. Right. Isaiah replied, this is the sign from the Lord to prove that he will do his promise. Would you like the shadow on the sundial to go forward ten steps or backward ten steps? (laughs) It's going to move the sun. It's going to move the fucking sun. The shadow always moves forward, Hezekiah replied, so that would be easy. Mm-hmm. Make it go ten steps backward instead. So, Isaiah the prophet asked the Lord to do this, and he caused the shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. The god I huh. of Ahaz? Yeah. I guess Ahaz built that at sundial? I guess he did. Um, I don't fucking know. But the god I knew, the Moses god, mm-hmm. he'd have been pissed that this guy was even asking for proof. Right? Uh, right. Or like you know, some sort of confirmation. Mm-hmm. You're like, be who the like, fuck are you to question me? Yeah, I'm God. I'm the Great I Am. Right. Yeah. I am what I am. What I am. But now he's like, whatever. I'll just do this magic trick for you, so I can pre-. like, oh, you just do magic. You you not only do you you answer prayers and fix this guy who has lots of money, and and you do a fucking magic trick for him to prove. Yeah. You know that you're God. Yeah. You accept. That's, challenges. that's awfully nice because you don't do that for anybody else. Right. Why? What's so special about this guy? He's king. I mean, there's been other kings, though. It's good to be this king. Uh, It's good to be that king, yeah. (laughs) Soon after this, Moradak Baladon, yes, son of Baladon, king of Babylon, okay. (laughs) That's a mouthful. It sure as fuck is, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick. Mm, Okay. Hezekiah received the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the aromatic oils. You know, people keep attacking you for that stuff. Maybe you'd not show them all that right? stuff. Right? Just saying. Wait, I would like to see a humble king. Right? I would like to see a humble king who doesn't like be like, Hey, look at all the wood and pomegranates and gold and brass and if shit. If you were truly a good person, if you were truly a good king, mm-hmm. wouldn't you be showing off... Your wonderful people that you are in charge of. I would show and showing off, and, t- and gloating about their accomplishments. Yeah, and I was like, going to say I would be showing off like this is the library that we have built so that right, our people will yeah. have education and continue to um, pass down all that we have learned right, through the ages. And right. this is this is our great medical center of healing where we give our our life and and all of our time and days to making people be able to live as long as they can. But no, and he literally shows off the gold and silver. This is my rich. I'm rich. How, <laughs> see how rich I am? <laughs> right. Like, yep. You and then it's it, you good. question why people try to attack you. Yeah. It's like, well, you're showing them that you're fucking rich. Mm-hmm. They want rich, so they come get the rich. Yeah. That that's simple. Yeah. Like it's simple math, man. Exactly. They ain't coming for your farms. Right, yeah, yeah, if you show them how great the farms are, they don't give a fuck. Yep. They want the gold and silver. But maybe they would give a fuck, who could know, because maybe, nobody ever yeah. showed off their fucking farms. Well, that's true, that's true. And, and honestly, that You know, this would be a better world if everybody cared more about their people and their farms and stuff mm-hmm. than they cared about gold and silver. Yeah, exactly. Just saying. Exactly. He also took them to see his armory and showed them everything in his royal treasury. Because once you show them the gold and silver, mm-hmm. you got to show them how much you can defend it. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Here, look at all my good stuff, and look at how you can't have none of it. <laughs> right, yeah. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Well, nothing? I doubt it. But they okay. Didn't, they didn't mention anything I'm interested in. Right, yeah. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked him, What did those men want? Where are they even from? Right. Hezekiah replied, They came from the distant land of Babylon. 
Well, what did they see in your palace? Isaiah asked. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I own, all my royal treasuries. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, um, excuse me, but you're stupid. No, that's not what he said. <laughs> Listen to this message from the Lord. Oh, God. The time is coming when everything in your palace, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now, will be carried off to Babylon. <laughs> 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 Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken in, away into exile. Oh, my God. They will become eunuchs. Wait, I thought, hold on. I thought God just got done saying, literally like seconds ago before we started talking about this, mm -hmm. he said he was going to defend this place with his honor because it's David's, it's his people. No, no, no. He said, I will let you live 15 years longer. Right, but there, there was a part where he said he would defend it. Did he? Yeah. Okay, I'll go back later. I'm too tired right now. Okay. I can't be bothered. And, and just, I'm stupid. like, this is... It's too stupid. It, yeah. But you missed the part where I said, your sons will get taken away and become fucking eunuchs. Oh, I didn't miss it. Eunuchs. Yeah. Who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Yeah, God's a dick and he's going to make them dickless. I guess. <laughs> Listen to this. I, I accidentally read the next sentence. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, this message you have given me from the Lord is good. Wait, what? <laughs> I say that wait what? <laughs> Hezekiah yeah. the king said to Isaiah the prophet Yeah this message that you just gave me, you know, where they're gonna come right. get my the shit, bad shit and they're gonna take my sons and turn them into right. Right, right, right. That message that you just gave me from the Lord is good. I'm confused. For the king was thinking, uh, at least there'll be peace and security during my lifetime. So he's okay with Sure that. Yeah. That's fine. Whatever. You remember he was paying off people earlier so they wouldn't uh -huh. attack, yeah. and now he's just like, well, as long as that's all they're they're just taking, you know, they're just taking everything. My my sons and and my gold and silver, and but we're not we're still going to be okay, yeah. You know, except for those people, I'll be dead. What the fuck do I care? Right? Yeah. Yeah. The rest of the events in Hezekiah's reign, including the extent of his power and how he built a pool, wait, and dug a, a <laughs> and dug a tunnel to bring water into the city, are recorded in that the, the stupid book. Yeah. Book. yeah. Hezekiah died, and his son Manasseh Miasa, became the next king. The end. All right. Well, that was Second Kings chapter twenty. There is a fucking spider coming down a fucking web. Oh my god, you guys, you guys. Oh, oh, we'll you see. just dropped the fucking spider. I oh did. my god, we are on the air. We are it being recorded. Oh my god. God is attacking us. God doesn't <laughs> like us. He sent a fucking spider. That spider was just coming down his web at us. Oh my he was. God. All right. Oh my God. So that was Second Kings chapter 19. No, that was 20. 20. That was 20. 20. That and, was 20. Uh, yeah, sorry. It's Friday. I was a little off my oh, game there. Oh, oh, oh. There's a spider running around here somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, my God. Yeah. oh this is terrifying. Um, and tomorrow <laughs> is Saturday. We'll yes. be back with. Um, okay. Um. Uh, the Q and A. Yeah. And how do you say it? Saturday. There you, Q there you go. And I'm sorry. There's a spider. <laughs> and then on Sunday we're gonna be back with Sacrilegious Book Club. And then we'll be back again on Monday with um, Second Kings chapter twenty one. All right. We'll see you guys then. Unless the spider gets us. There's Bye. always that chance. Hey wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegiousdiscourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. 
Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.